We're ready? Yes, we are. And it is Historical Book Club, y'all. Hey, everybody. Okay, here we are. Another Historical Book Club. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now is there a way to get this, like... No, it's on the side. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. okay yeah, yeah, we figured that out. I see what you're up. saying. Yeah. If we got this a little higher. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. That's okay, so... Like, hey, you seen it? Have we bombed, have we bombed Syria yet? I don't think so, but Not I think it's I coming. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a hard time keeping my uh, keeping my eyes off that. Actually, actually, um, we're going to be doing some talking about that um, part of that part of the world. Um, hey, there we go. Um, yeah, it doesn't look doesn't doesn't look good. Um, it's the um, third. It's the third chemical, like major chemical attack in, yeah, there's been a, like major, major fight, basically, like major wow. chem, chem, chemical, chemical attack. And the, I mean, the reason it's such a big, it's such a big deal is um, chemical weapons are prohibited under the, under the Geneva Convention. And yeah. so there's supposed to be certain standards or laws that we all that apply to everyone even even though we do um, go to war the United Nations um, just had an emergency session yesterday that I was following to see about um, you know and it was vote I, I have to get it the resolution Syria is on the Security Council right, so right. They voted again, you know. They voted against like doing anything. So, last I heard, not much is not much not much is happening. Beside um, whether our president is going to bomb any bomb anything, I was um, listening because okay, you know because remember we've talked about tw about tw about twenty eleven twenty eleven right right and I felt back then that we should bomb um, Bashar al Assad. Um, but so I was um, listening to um, you know some news some news about it tonight you know because I don't understand the whole like military tactics and all and all that so they were saying they could like bomb the facilities or something but what I don't understand is why can't we send our military in just to protect people right right that's what I don't understand. Okay, I mean, well, I know back when Obama was was in office, everybody was kind of it was all on that thing about having him take people out of countries and taking taking him taking the the military out of countries like yeah. Afghanistan and stuff. Yeah, and Which so you I don't know. Do. <laughs> well, I mean, really sometimes did. you can't. You did. Yeah, you can't. I mean, people think it's just like once you go, you know, you put a bunch of troops somewhere. Yeah, that it's just like. They can just go. And a lot of <laughs> times sure it doesn't can. work. Yeah. And yeah. that's what people don't understand. I was trying to explain. I was like telling people, I was like, Dude, this is a big war. You know, you got all these people down there. They're still fighting off, you know, different terrorists here and there. And the country itself is in bad shape. So yeah. once they leave, they're just going to take over the country again. Which is exactly, which is, was, <laughs> which was what, how the Obama administration felt about, felt about Syria. Right. Um... But I don't know. I mean, I think you need to do. I think certain things should be done with a step, a step by step process. And you know, if you see somebody about to be about to be hit by a truck, you know, I mean, hopefully, I feel that you should just try and help. It, right, right. Now, do you do you feel that like some of these countries that are so need to help? That do you think eventually, even if they can't catch up, we should just pull out, or do you think we should stay until they are well maintained? 
Um, I think that um, the United States should do a better job working with, I mean, I, I really feel like it, the Arab nations should look out for each other more. And that is why I, um, you know, some of them that have like riches and stuff like that. And the thing, okay, and the thing about Syria is that part of the war is being funded is, I mean, is being funded by Iran, Iran, and um, the driving force behind it is Russia. Right, right. You know what they said something hmm. about that on the hmm. news. They said something about that. If we went, did leave, that like two countries, like one of them was Russia, and Russia and Iran, they might yeah. try to take it over. Yeah, exactly. That's the so problem. You see, you see what I'm saying? So a lot. Of but these... we're not really there. We have two. We just have two. We have two thousand tro troops there. I mean, that that's not really. I, I think it's more the fact that if we're there, yeah, that, that we'll you know we won't know what's happening. Whereas if we're gone, yeah, yeah. it's hard for us to maintain it. So that's why I think I understand. I, I can see the morning to be like, okay, we'll wait until the Americans leave, then we'll take it over. You know, because if they yeah. came in, I, I'm pretty sure that's when we'll definitely bring more troops in. You know, so they don't want to have to deal with that side of it. They'd rather, you know, us just go and just, once they're gone, we'll take it over. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus, man, the same week the president was saying we we're going to leave Syria, and then he's talking about, like, bomb it, you know, bombing, bombing Syria, but it, it's just, I'm like, I don't even understand, like, what they even have left to bomb. I mean, this has been, the civilians have been suffering for seven years. Yeah, maybe they have a lot of terrorists. I, I mean, some of these places are overran. Yeah, I know bombing, it sucks. They're bombing, they're bombing civilians. And I know, that's, that's the bad part, man, but some of these terrorists, you know, and I, you know, I don't know, but I've never been in a war. I'm not in the army, but I used to watch like, you know, when they would show Vietnam wars and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Literally, the terrorists would sometimes be in the same camps with the civilians. Yeah. And so sometimes yeah. you literally have to bomb those camps, even if you're bombing the people that have nothing to do with it. And that's the part that's kind of hard. You go to these countries, they all speak the same language. Yeah. And they all, you know, pretty much look the same. So, I mean. Of course, a terrorist isn't going to say, "Hey, I'm a terrorist." You know, they're going to come out and, if you know, they're they're in a place with innocent people, they're going to act like they're innocent too. Well, so. well, um, yeah, okay, and that is um, that is the same justification for um, dropping chem chemical chemical right. weapons. It's like, well, the rebels are right in, are right in there with the civilians. Well, I think that that is too high a price to pay. There's also very, very different, I mean, you know, when we talk, that's actually one of the things that um, we're gonna, that's one of the reasons I sent you these maps. So are we, are we coming through on that one too? I think, we're not, I don't know. It doesn't I think look the video like is actually show, like funny stuff. Up. Let me see. Because, um, I thought yes. we could look at some of these middle of these um, no, Middle East maps shreds. and all that. And all um, that but we do that. have the maps. On hey, there. it's my favorite city council candidate on there. <laughs> <laughs> you need to come on. And, okay, so this morning I went to a meeting of senior citizens about services for seniors here in, here in Solano County. Because oh, I'm nice. I'm get I'm getting there, but also, I mean it's just such a big I mean that's just the measure of decency of society is how senior is how seniors are seniors are treated right. okay so um okay can I pull yeah, you know how to do it I yeah remember how to do it you know where the arrows at okay and those are the three on the bottom there you go yeah okay because when we're talking about Syria we're talking about um this is one of the things I've been there's a lot of like nationalities and cultures right. within within Syria, and one of the countries that I was um, people that I was talking about talking about this week was Turkmen was Turkmen Turkmenis Turkmenistan. Um, okay, where's Kurds? Where is 
Kurdistan because uh, one of the things we talk about here at Historical Book Club is um, <clears throat> is nationalism, populatism, populism, separatism, trying to figure out all that stuff. And there's some right, big right. ones with that with that today. And so that's a big issue with um, the Kurds. And the Kurds are people whose country was like split up after after World War Two. And so they're people that live there's Iraqi Kurds, Syrian Kurds, Turkish Kurds, and Iranian Kurds. So next time I'm sorry I should get the um the maps on here too, but so basically it's a country it's you know Sort of a disp a people people with people without a country, and we talk about we talk about that that too, and one of my interests is that I actually went to the Kurd Kurdistan, which is it, the Kurdish part of the world, when I was twenty two, when I was traveling oh. when I was traveling traveling by myself. Things are not like they used to be. You went there by yourself. I went there by myself, and I was yeah, I was like but it twenty-two. But cool, probably being. Well, no, no. I mean, it was there were far few. I mean, this was a long time ago. Right. Okay, this was like almost th almost thirty almost thirty years ago. No, there was a, there were a lot fewer tourists there in general, and. Um, it's a real different era. I mean, back then when you went when you went traveling, I mean, okay, way before internet or anything, they had something called poste restante, and you could just like let your relatives know where you were, where you might be, and they could mail letter, and they could like mail letters to the post office in that town. Wow. Okay, and I wasn't that I wasn't nearly that that organized, so I didn't know any of know any of that. You know, and I was always really independent. I mean, I, I was out on my own really young, really young, um, and so it's not like anybody was gonna like stop me or supervise me or or anything. <laughs> but I was like, oh man, people would go people would go crazy now, but. You know, I mean, I like when I had this thing about wanting to sleep in a cave in Greece, which I did. I went and stayed in this cave, I slept in this cave by myself um, <laughs> for some reason. And, okay, so I went to Turkey, and part of the reason I, I just was so sort of disorganized it was that I really had a hard time like trying to make it to uh, make <coughs> it to other countries. <laughs> like, this is nuts. So. Um, I went, oh, so I was in Turkey and I went over to the part of the country where the Kurds are and that is where I learned about Kurds and there was a lot of aggression and, ang and anger there and um, I was just, you know, staying in this little hotel and I realized like, oh, you know, the town pimp and the town police officer were both like, Found out, found out where I found out where I was, basically, and um, you know, wow. and besides, there's going to be like, you know, I mean, who knows? In some little town, you know, I mean, there's like so much crossover, crossover right. with uh, with all of that, you know. I mean, that's one of the problems with like why you need to like try and stay on the right side of the law when you're tra when you're traveling because there's a lot of places where you know somebody can like arrest. The same person can arrest you and then, you know, the same person can, like, offer you drugs and then arrest you for, like, doing them. <laughs> and, Whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. That so is I didn't, funny. I was just, re I mean, you know, it was just wild. I can't believe that nothing happened. Um, and then a couple months after that was when Saddam Hussein invaded invaded Kuwait. Okay, that was like nineteen ninety or ninety one or so or something. So right, right. yeah, there was a lot of it. But I've always had this in, this interest in the Kurds because I was there so so long ago, and 
yeah, people were not traveling in Turkey in the early nineties like they like they do yeah. like they do now. And yeah. Yeah. So um one of the things I've learned is that the Turks have a tradition I learned that the past the past couple of weeks of female warriors. So half of their army is women. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I just watched a, docu a documentary about them, and it's just it's just the Kurds. It's um, it's not um, so it's not like you. So what I'm saying is that other parts of the society are still like pretty traditional and Islamic. Um, so. A couple of the women they they interviewed that were in the military were just like, you know, okay, your choice is like being married off and like doing housework or going to, or going to war. <laughs> but they went to war, so <clears throat> they actually. Um, so basically, the Turks have been people. I mean, the the Kurds have been fighting for a homeland for a long time. Right, right. Like other, several other like nationalities that we've that we've spoken of, and there was a lot of um, terrorism between um, the Kurds and the Turks in Turkey. But the um, Iraq, there's not the the Iraqi part of. Anyway, they they have they seceded from Syria. I think from from Iraq, and so basically, there. I just watched an in, watched an interview yeah. um, with their minis, with one of their ministers ministers of communication of communication who was a woman who was ex, who was explaining that. So basically. They were able to have a, ref a referendum to have their own to have their own country, and their um, language had been barred for a while, but now they're taught in their own language. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So there's a little success success right there. Um, okay, so that was why I I was pulling up. Um, <clears throat> I was pulling up that part of the world. Okay, and there's a new prime minister in Ethiopia. Oh, okay. is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yes, yes, it's good. It's it's good. He is Oromo, and the Oromo are a minority group in um, Ethiopia. So yes, so that's so that's good. I mean, he's from an underrepresented community, and he has served in the military, but he also has a degree in um, peace and international studies from some like famous university or something. So it's like, yeah, that's somebody you want to have um, running your running your country. Ho yeah. ho hopefully, <laughs> Ethiopia has a real strong economy, so or pretty or pretty strong. So the problems that they are having has been ethnic violence right. and. So, I mean, hopefully under, you know, like having an or Oromo prime minister will help. So anyway, I mean, Ethiopia has always been an interesting, an interesting country to me just because I've known a whole lot of people from, e from Ethiopia. Okay. And I like Ethiopian food. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. They got a lot of places around here. Especially yeah, in they Oakland. do? Well, in Oakland, wait. <laughs> well, wait, I mean, Oakland, Oakland. Okay. I mean, what I'm saying around here is wait, that we can go to. We can. Where's Ethiopia? Ethiopian food in Vallejo? Not in Vallejo itself, <laughs> but I mean, around technically, here, Vallejo. Yeah. When I say around here, when you're a Bay Area person, everything is. <laughs> so I <laughs> say around here. Around as long here. as I can drive there within 20 miles, it's considered to be close. That's me. Well, I work. <laughs> they have one in El Cerrito. The whole place where I used, to, well, where I used, in the hospital where I where I where I used to work, I worked with a whole bunch of um, Ethiopian people. So there was always Ethiopian food. Yeah, I love so, it. Yeah. Well, we got we got Indian food down here. Yeah, that's very totally different. It's very it's very different. 
But we do have, yeah, we have it pretty close. It's not like you have to go. You have to go to Oak. Is there a bridge toll? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But yeah. you, there's one in El Cerrito. El Cerrito okay. is El, closer than El, El Cerrito. Okay. Well, I mean, overall, it's not that. I don't know. It's not mm. that far to me. Okay, so one of you know one of the things about the historical book club is that it was about sort of inspired by books, and so. Um, no, actually, okay, this is a book that it's really hard that, that I was thinking about talking Well, talking about it is a Ethiopian book with a lot of history in it, but I kind of don't even know how to start with that, with that particular one. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, and unfortunately, speaking about land and, te- land and territories, um, there's been a lot of violence in the Gaza Strip. And there's been uh, a Palestinian journalist was journalist was killed. Um, there's been a commemoration. It, there's been a commemoration of um, land of land being taken of land being taken. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact. Um, I get mixed up which name which name it, which name is which. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of, viol- of violence right now on the Ga- on the Gaza Strip, and um, it's just it's just bad. And wow. also speaking of um, nationalism and all that, a big problem right now with the state of Israel is that they are expelling African migrants. Wow. Yeah. Like thousands of them. So what they're doing is they're offering... And I want to clarify that... Okay, this is something that's odd to me. They are expelling migrants that are single men. So they're letting like women and kids and kids stay. But um, basically, so there's the people... There's a lot of people from Eritrea and refugees from Eritrea and from South, South Sudan who came to the state of Israel. And Israel has offered them um, money to leave and go back and be taken to a different African country, but uh, not telling them where. Okay. Isn't that crazy? So that's what they've done before is bring people, they just like dumped a bunch of people off and off in Rwanda. So it's like, that's not... So, but I, I mean, so what do these other areas feel like when they're just getting these people dumped off on them? I mean, are they okay with that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that would have been a deal. Uh, that will be a that would have been a deal struck between Israel and okay, Rwanda. Rwanda. Okay. So you know, again, it's, there's going to be the um, you know. So I don't. And I'm sure it's advantageous to someone, but not to the migrants and re- and refugees. You know, and it's like, do you, I mean, you know, do you get, like, with the history of the Jews, just how the history, what the, the state of Israel is? I mean, how upsetting this is? I mean, Israel was made for refugees. Israel was settled by ref- by refugees. Right, right. I mean, you know, it's supposed to be a Jewish state, and... The Jews have been refu- refugees just about just about everywhere, and that's you can't treat pre- you can't treat people that way. Right, right. I agree. Yeah, and unfortunately, there is. Um, I was listening to um, um, a pretty great. <laughs> there's this, some pretty. I mean, I like Al Jazeera because they're for many reasons. One of them is because they're really opinionated mm-hmm. okay and so there's this journalist on all just the era called Medi something where the, he's like the arab tucker carlson <laughs> <laughs> he's really obnoxious sort of but he nail he nails people and so um they were doing a show with a you know question and answer segment there was one person there um, one Israeli guy there, and no one else was Israeli, and, you know, even, like, the newscaster, too, was just, you know, very, you know, I mean, you can say they're biased, but, you know, you know what he thinks, and he's, right, right. you know, you know what he thinks, and he, 
um, asks people questions and like gets gets stuff gets stuff out of them. It would drive me crazy because it's really, uh, you know, I mean, basically it turned into like a yelling a uh, yelling fest, like just about anything that hap that happens in the in the in the Middle East. But you're be you, there's really some racism, um, and with this issue issue with issue with the migrants and it's people are say openly saying things that are just wrong you know about that those people bring we don't like these people it's like bringing down the neighborhood and all that and it's so oh yeah 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 state of israel this the state of israel is not on my good side right now they're never <laughs> I don't know. Not my grandparents' state of Israel. That's all I can say. Um, okay, so... Um, then, okay, because, you know, we're talking... One of the things I've been looking at with different countries and with the history stuff and with this country, too, is anti-immigration anti and how that's... It's just so strange to me how that can be a political issue everywhere, like, and it always has been historically. So you know, it's 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 just weird. It's like where are people? Where are people? Where are people supposed to go? Because um, Austria's prime minister is named Viktor Orban, and he was just not. A, Hungary's prime minister is named uh, Viktor Orban, and he was just elected to a third term on an anti-immigrant platform. Um, he's the one, he did build a wall to keep refugees out and people are very ple pleased, about, pleased about that. And, um, and so he's then, the government of Hungary has placed an extra tax on nonprofits that help refugees and immigrants. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what I learned is that um, Hungary is really, really sensitive about outsiders. And I, when I say outsiders, I mean invaders. You know, they've been, since they were, like, invaded by the Nazis and invaded by the communists. And so you can really manipulate information there by talking about people being outs outsiders. So the tax, so taxing the refugees, the, the refugee NGOs, non-governmental organizations, is done under the pre the pretext of these are people these are non-Hungarians coming in here telling us how to do, how to do things and I guess hung Hungary you know as a country that's been like conquered and occupied Hungarians are very sensitive about that but you know meanwhile they're like a ninety eight percent homogeneous country and they're just trying to keep everything out okay and one of the phrases everybody out one of the phrases that was being um used is populist nationalism wow what's that <laughs> come on you're supposed to be helping me figure out out all this um you know when they talk about this on um you know trying populism is supposed to be you know popular the common you know so is it like people? just generally saying making nationalism popular? Is yeah, I think so. What it means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Because I mean, you know, because God, look at where we are here in. You know, we bring it back. We bring it back here. Because when I look at like, okay, here's anti-immigrant sentiment in the state of Israel, in Hungary, in the in the U.S. Um, then that is a problem. You know, that's been a whole motivating thing behind Brexit. So it's like, I mean, what is it? What's similar and what's and what's different? And right, right. how is it being manipulated? by leaders okay but shit okay now here's the sort of like this is how i view politics okay what i would what i would do if 
I was trying to like you know get the government going going right now what is just trade pieces of the wall for DACA let him build like you know <laughs> just okay like fine let him build you know I mean it's ridiculous it's like you know okay you're talking about miles and miles and miles say like you know strike a deal like okay put up a wall here in exchange for path to citizenship to DACA because I feel like in a way that's that's a very the wall and all of that that should be a very easy um you so know. so they would be building the wall for free for for their for their well let's just say well no the because you said you said if, the, if daca built like oh no i would um i would trade in ex, like politically i would okay. um that's what no that's what i shit they probably love that <laughs> go put them <laughs> the no i i mean I just feel like you need to strike strike some deals and right. strike some pain, you know, and strike some painful deals. But I just, I really feel that they need to morally and just everything, justice wise, right. they need to. There needs to be a life. For the for the doc for the DACA people, they need so, to be so. Um, so what I'm saying, it's like, yeah, I know the wall is terrible and all and all that, but I feel like, um, in order to, we should be able, okay, like sacrifice. You know what? Do something that'll hurt. Like, yeah, it'll hurt to put up, it'll hurt to put up the wall, to put. Um, but. Um, so you think maybe like. Maybe if they had them work on the wall and, and promise them citizenship. No, no, no. Two completely separate things. Okay. I'm talking about getting make 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 the deal. I'm talking about like making the making the political making a political deal. Oh, build okay. like okay, we'll give you this. We'll let you build this much wall if you guys um, agree with like pathway to citizenship. For oh, okay, I got you, got you. I see what you mean. You I see know, know. strikes. Strike some strike some hard some hard bargains. Okay. okay? You know people are gonna and. Um, I don't I, think this president could do that though. Well, I think the Democrats suck at it. I think he might he might <laughs> be able to. I think the Democrats suck at making bargains. I mean. Yeah, but this, I don't know, man. This has been the worst. Yeah. Fighting I've ever seen. I mean, eventually, you know, both sides would kind of sometimes with most presidents would work with you. This this one is just. I don't see it working with this guy. I don't see it working. I just don't. I don't see it working, man. I just. Maybe. You, but you. But you got to. I think that um, the Democrats. Should, okay, use your brains. Don't be. Don't just. Don't be. In, don't be inflexible. And I don't know. I mean, right, I feel right. like okay. Psychologically, it's like okay. Get. I mean, you know, the problem with him would be like okay. Strike out. Find a way to like strike some sort of deal and then like sign it sign it right there but it's just it's just awful to me like okay be prepared i feel like in order to make to move like yeah be prepared be prepared to sac to sacrifice to sacrifice things and i mean i feel like there's so many facets of immigration that people should that they should be able to like strike some deals in order to try and make things more hu more humane in order to try and make some progress like okay give them this give them, them this much money for border security in exchange for something or other for DACA, you know. Right, right. I mean, do it, do it that way. I'd let him send the fucking national Gu national guard to the border. So what? See, that's what I would. That's what I would have done. You know. <laughs> the national guard. I don't know, man. The national guard is kind of. What else? They're not really made for. Sure, they are. There's, there's tough. There's tough. What are you talking about? I don't think they're as tough as regular soldiers, though. I mean, they're the national national guards get deployed. They, do. they get deployed to war zones. They can certainly handle the border. I guess so, but I mean, from what I was hearing from actual people in the army, they're like, I mean, having the national guard to like really guard something, they're like, like 
They're like the weekend warriors, so to speak. Oh, that's cool. That's what they said? Man, this is coming from other these are coming from people who are in the army. You know, I'm, I'm hearing it from them. Look, I, I have okay, to trust I'm, I'm, what they say. Look, man, I'm not, okay, in the not army. everybody not everybody's <laughs> a green ber, a green beret or whatever. Yeah, but but they get deployed they get deployed to war zone. I don't know, man. A lot a lot of people are against it. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm not in the army, so I don't know. I understand your point of view. They are you yeah. know, they're national, they're, they're our security here, but I don't know how good that would be. I didn't even realize that they got deployed to, um, to foreign, to foreign countries, but they do, but that's the sort of thing where we should be like, okay, make some, make some, make some deals, okay, things should, things should. And yeah, nothing against you guys. You guys all protect the country. I give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, 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 I'm getting this information from a guy who's in the army. Yeah. These are army people. This isn't coming from me. Yeah. You know, you wear a uniform, you're the same to me. But hey, I know that you, but if you talk to army people, they all have their own culture of what's, you know what I'm saying? If like if you're a, a yeah. Marine can c- compare to if you're in the normal army, yeah. it's, it's a, there's a difference. Hey, Sully. So. My friend, okay, my friend, Sully, my friend Sully, Sully is there. What's up, uh, hey, Sully? Sully? Okay, so slight jump. Sully just posted a really cool um, article earlier about um, water beds. Oh, I want to hear this. <laughs> okay, are they coming I'm, back? No. <laughs> that's, I'm surprised you remember them. They were big in the 70s. Okay, in the 70s. My parents' cool friends had water beds. Everybody who was cool had them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they sort of like they kind of like went out of favor during yeah. the during the eighties, like insurance and all that. And also, but what they they started making things with like a little bit a little bit more support. Yeah. But I saw that. I was but like, oh yeah, I wanted that. a water bed. You were laying it, it would just. It's kind of like you're on water. Well, you are, yeah. But I know that I remember what used to be the bad point about them is, like you said, if you get a hole, you God, know, that's a lot yeah. of water, to, especially if you don't, you know, catch it or if it's just like a yeah. instant hole, like you're kind of, yeah. your floor is gone. Yeah, yeah, you probably, yeah, there's probably, yeah, people probably had, had concerns about, um, concerns about, okay, good, Sully, oh, oh, <laughs> love you, Sully, cool. We're we're totally working on trying to like communicate more more with more with this with our, with everybody here. So, um, okay, we are about, we're gonna go on a break and yeah. come back in just a few. And I'm gonna read your comments, Sully. So like,